For many years, fortune was benevolent to him and only before his death it turned its back on its favorite. The name of this navigator was Jean-Francois de Gallo, Comte de la Perouse. He was born in Leguo in the south of France in 1741. The son of an aristocrat, he grew purposeful and inquisitive. He was fond of natural sciences and became engrossed in reading books about sea voyages. And though the prospect of being a naval officer didn't promise a comfortable life every day and a quiet, safe life, Francois was not afraid to take a risk. At the age of 18, he took part in a marine battle on the Seven Years' War. In spite of his young age, Francois fought with the enemy bravely and was wounded and while in captivity was able to run away and return to his service. In 1782, the squadron commanded by Le Perouse attacked British forts on the coast of the Hudson Bay. It was the most difficult of all my campaigns, Francois admitted in a letter to his mother. For his bravery, Francois was awarded a sword with his name engraved on the handle. By the age of 40, the brave naval officer had had 18 campaigns and received a special award, the Order of St. Louis. La Perouse's fearlessness attracted the attention of Louis XVI, who wanted to organize an expedition to the Great Southern Sea, as the Pacific Ocean was called at that time. To enhance France's prestige and extend its territory, discoveries that would eclipse the achievements of James Cook, the British voyager, were necessary. The king decided that the experienced sailor La Perouse was the most suitable leader for a three-year research expedition. The destiny always protected La Perouse and nobody doubted that the captain would cope with the task brilliantly as usual. On the 1st of August, 1785, Beausoul and the Astrolabe, two well-equipped ships, left Brest, a seaport in the northwest of France. La Perouse's expedition headed for the southwest through the Atlantic, rounded South America, and entered the Pacific Ocean. In addition to the 200 sailors, there were astronomers, geologists, botanists, cartographers, and artists aboard. But the long navigation was impossible without losses. Twenty people perished while they measured the depth of the ocean. And in the island of Samoa, savages armed with bludgeons killed 12 French sailors and the captain of the astrolabe, Perrault de Langley. Nevertheless, in July of 1787, the expedition reached Sakhalin. At that time, the natives called the land Tapshoka, but Captain Le Perouse named it Sagalin. On the maps of that period, Sagalin and Hokkaido were shown as one island. Rounding it from the south, Le Perouse found that they were two islands divided by the ocean. Afterwards, the strait between Sakhalin and Hokkaido received the name of its discoverer, La Perouse. In the Avachan Bay, the captain visited Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky. During the mooring, La Perouse received letters from France, and among them there was a notification of the decision to give him the rank of admiral and an order to go to Australia. Before continuing the voyage, Jean-Francois Le Peru sent scientific reports they wrote and maps and the logbook to France. His mate, Bartholomé de Lesseps, carrying the materials of the expedition, got home by land in more than a year, but he became the only member of the expedition who was fated to survive. And meanwhile, Beausoul and the Astrolabe sailed south. In January of 1788, the ships dropped anchor in Australia's Botany Bay, where Sydney is situated now. From that place, La Perouse sent a letter to the French Minister of Marine. The captain informed the minister about his intention of going to New Caledonia. 
On the 10th of March, 1788, La Perouse's ships left Botany Bay. Three years passed, but there was no news of La Perouse. The searching expedition didn't bring any information about the Admiral and his ships either. Thirty-six years later, an Irish merchant saw the handle of La Perouse's sword engraved with his name in the hands of an aborigine in one of the islands of Santa Cruz. And the natives told that many years ago, two ships had floundered on the reef off the coast. But many sailors reached the island and settled near their aborigines. The last survivor of the shipwreck had died only two years before the Irish arrived. Whether it was La Perouse himself is still a mystery. One thing is known for sure, he gave the sea not only his energy and bravery, but also his life. And providence that protected him for so many years during the war turned out to be helpless in a peaceful voyage. And who knows what other discoveries made by Jean-Francois Le Perouse went to the bottom with his frigates. <laughs>